Welcome to the front, new commandos. Today we're going to be doing in general. So this week we'll cover from the 22nd to the 29th, and we're going to start with the cursed front. So a lot of stuff has happened here. The Russians have uh, pressed the advantage with their armor groups, and they've driven back the Ukrainians to about here. Uh, they have electronic warfare systems. And the weather was not letting the Ukrainians use drone drones, but the Ukrainians were able to narrowly avoid getting encircled in this area up here uh, because the weather improved for a little bit. And the fog is making it difficult to spot assault groups coming in. So this crossroads, they've been leveraging pretty well. Uh, they're doing a lot of armored pushes, which is tough for the Ukrainians to fight any. So I expect uh, the map's not totally accurate. They've been pushed back to about this area, and they took a retook a sliver here. For Ukraine, retook a little town that was right in this area. But over overall, the situation. Has negatively Ukrainian front for the past week. On our, so we can see they've gotten reinforced by a tank division that's on the way. And they have pushed uh, the Ukrainians out of this pocket. Next we have the Kupiansk area. So the Russian Ukrainians have repelled an attack and counterattack and taken quite a bit of territory. The map hasn't updated, but I've put in approximately where the units are. Uh, the Russians did make an incursion across the river here, which will be shown on the map on the next slide. And they did take these two settlements. So that is also not updated on the map, but the Ukrainians have pushed back all the way to about here. So uh, things have gone pretty well for the Ukrainians so far, since these two uh, regiments are probably not going to do too well against this much uh, mechanized and artillery. Uh, Torsk, there's also good news out of the Torsk front. Uh, the Ukrainian sappers did manage to recapture the high-rise buildings and... Azov uh, played a critical role in providing a drone support that pushed back the Russians uh, basically across the front. Uh, weather's also playing a big role across every front. Next week looks like snow and rain. Four days of the week. Pretty much everywhere. SCVR, there has been uh, some advancements made by... Uh, Russians here, uh, mostly near Torsk though, but overall not a lot of movement. Uh, again, most of their stuff went to Ukraine. It's probably in the south here. On Bolidar area front. Turakov, uh, things have gone really bad on this front. So. The Russians moved a lot of armor to this area. Uh, I think what happened, as you can see here, uh, they recaptured a couple defensive points here, and then they encircled this one and are in the process of capturing it as we speak. Uh, I think what happened, because those were supposed to be strong points for the Ukrainians, is they were maybe swapping with the uh, Airborne Brigade here, 72nd. And the Russians took advantage of the confusion during the swap. Hey, Wolfie, welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. How are you? Thank you for the follow. So, yeah, they took the strong point here, here, encircled this one, and are in the process of capturing it. And the 72nd was pushed back. So they've also encircled some areas near... Kirikivka, and it's not looking good there either since the supply lines are threatened. 
Pretty good. Was I playing War Thunder earlier? I was. I'm taking a break to do the uh, map update, though. So, strategic news. North Koreans arrived in Russia ahead of their units, and after they arrived at the training grounds in the Ukraine area, they were hit with HIMARS artillery. And this is the arrival of the first North That's the first action they getting hit by HIMARS. Uh, there's also some rumors that the Russian tourniquets, standard issue ones, are really low quality. I saw a video where they broke when they tried to tighten them. It was really bad if you actually had to use them. And in other news, next week, rainy season has arrived. So the armored advances will probably not happen next week, just because of the mud. Uh, Ukraine is doing a new wave of mobilization, trying to mobilize 160,000 soldiers. It's not super popular because everyone who wanted to volunteer has already done that, pretty much conscripting people at this point. And the conscription law is everyone aged 25 to 60. And I think the reason for this was uh, if you're over 25, you've had a kid. So you're. You're fine in that area. So that was one of the main reasons that to that age. Uh, Zelensky also is requesting Tomahawk missiles. I don't think they're going to get those. They don't really have the capability of launching them. And the ground-based Tomahawk uh, missile launcher is like super, super, super new. It came out in 2023. So I don't think they're going to get that one. Tomahawks are also like four and a quarter million dollars or something like that. So, I, I'm not sure how much the Storm Shadow missiles cost from the UK, but I think those ones are better anyway. I think those ones are better. Uh, there's a new division brigade that's being trained in France. Uh, the 155th Mechanized. So this one is probably going to consist of 4,500 soldiers and a lot of armor. So it's all French equipment, and they're still I think they're still training in France. So that'll be pretty cool. And they also have their order of battle here. So you can see they're equipped with leopards and AMXs. So we're going to get to see how the AMXs perform in uh, actual combat. So that will be interesting. Uh, the Leopards are going to be a big deal, too. They need as many tanks as they can get. Uh, for the 72nd, uh, they put out an ad for volunteers, and they did discuss the laws for conscription. And they posted a video showing their M109 self-propelled artillery crew flying around Russian positions. Now we are on to the Israel update. So, not a lot of news from the ground in any decisive move. Uh, in Gaza, the Israeli colonel was uh, killed in action. Now, the unit still is in that area, so probably a little bit reduced uh, capacity. Uh, things are not super great for uh, Lebanon. Just the, the Air Force is a big deal, and there was the Iran stuff, so we'll cover that next. Uh, the Israeli aircraft struck targets in Iraq. HQ, it was reported that the Revolutionary Guard Corps got destroyed. The HQ, the Iran. Um, they took out S-300s. Ah, welcome to the stream, Sap. We are covering the Iran airstrikes now. So, up. About a hundred uh, Israeli jets were involved in this airstrike. I heard, I saw on Twitter that they were saying they were going to do another airstrike soon. So we might see that next week. Um, let me look at the list here. I have a list of units that they hit. So looks like 4K on the Iranian side. 4S3, S300 
500 air defense. One that we don't know, it's either an S400 or the 373. 12 solid fuel mixer uh, areas for missiles, a drone factory, and a nuclear research site. So this is credit from Yagabi Mate. Thank you for helping out with the slides. He's also who we have to thank for these cool backgrounds. And I think that covers it for this week. Oh, wait. Right. Um, actually, there was one thing near Yemen. Uh, no, never mind. I don't think that, that was uh, relevant for this week. And that covers this week's update. Thank you guys for watching. Um, have a good week, everybody. So Iran was striking Israel with planes? No, they weren't. Uh, it was Israel striking Iran with planes. So the Iranian Air Force is actually really, really, really bad. Uh, internally, they've been complaining about how bad their Air Force is, but they had never got any funding. Hey, Wolfie, did you have a question? Oh, okay, yeah, because I think they have F-14s. Not very many of them, if any, are still functioning. And after that, they have F-4S, which are basically museum pieces. They're still jets, but when they're going up against F-35s, they don't stand a chance. Oh, no, you're a waving. Oh, it's fine. So if they do a second strike, they have... Their air defense network has seriously deteriorated after this wave of airstrike. There's like eight or so functional. Yeah, not too many. Um, I think there was. Yeah, that's it. So we'll maybe come back later with some more Sunder. Otherwise, uh, enjoy your week, everyone.